All right, so a couple questions. Is inflation dead? Is there a double dip out there? Has the Fed done its work? I don't know. We're going to talk about it with Steve Forbes, Forbes Media Chairman, Editor-in-Chief, and author of Inflation, What It Is, Why It's Bad, and How to Fix It. And Kevin Hassett, former chair of the Council of Economic Advisors in the Trump administration, author of The Drift, Stopping America's Flight to Socialism. So, Kevin, your truck broke down, and what are you doing, Skyping or Zooming or something? Anyway, you... You, re you recovered yeah, very quickly. I, I ran inside and looked. You look great. Up to Skype. Yeah, you look terrific. Actually, <laughs> never better. Just in time to tell me how's the economy. I mean, we had a you know 2.4 percent real GDP. Uh, you know, it'd be nicer to have four or five percent GDP, but it was in line with the Atlanta Fed and it was above what the consensus was expecting. And I guess one point that you're making uh, is in an article is. Uh, given all the interest rate uh, hikes, both market rates and Fed rates and so forth, the economy is probably stronger than people might have expected. Is that, uh, is that what you're thinking? Yeah, it's certainly stronger than, than I expected. Uh, I think you were a little more optimistic than me over the last six months, right? And, and you've been proven right. And I wrote an article that just went up at National Review just a few minutes ago talking about where the misses are. And basically what we're seeing is that the normally interest-sensitive parts of the economy, that's business uh, fixed investment, uh, consumer durable purchases, uh, those things haven't really moved as, as much as they usually do in a tightening cycle. And I argue in the article it's because of other policies that aren't just like interest rate policy that are being done by Congress. So, for example, they've got a massive subsidy for electric cars, mm -hmm. $7,500. But that su subsidy only kicks in if you make the car in the U.S., and so sure enough, there's a lot of business investment making cars in the U.S. and a lot of people are buying cars. Both of those things sort of upset the normal interest rate cycle. And so if you dig through it, you can actually explain the number. Uh, and, and it really shouldn't be surprising giving other policy, given other policy besides Fed policy. Well, I mentioned uh, I was doing a segment with Sandra Smith earlier this afternoon. Sandra will be on set in the next uh, segment here. And I'm, I used your illustration about automobiles that, um, you know, despite the fact that borrowing rates have gone up quite a bit, uh, car sales are running about 16 million. That's not a global record, but it ain't nothing either. 16 million is still 16 million, and that is surprising. And, you know, these interest rates have gone up quite a bit. Steve Forbes, um, is the Fed doing the right thing? They snuggled up another quarter of a point yesterday. Um, I don't know. Is inflation dead here? I'm going to read a number. The GDP deflator, 2.2 percent uh, for the second quarter at an annual rate. Um, that's pretty much what the Fed's target is. Uh, the core PCE deflator, which is a Fed target, that is higher at 3.8 percent in the second quarter. Quarter. Um, what do you make of that? Is inflation dead? Uh, with the Federal Reserve around? No. Uh, we, we, we saw this movie back in the 1970s. They'd induce a slowdown, and then, uh, then they would uh, back off, and because they continued to weaken the dollar, inflation came back again. They don't understand. Prosperity, as you've hammered home so many times, does not cause inflation. Mm. Devaluing the value of the dollar causes inflation. So Powell, I think, has learned all the wrong lessons of the 70s. You felt back then they weren't hard enough long enough until Volcker came along. What happened with Volcker was, wasn't the recession per se that cured inflation, is what happened afterwards. He had a stable, relatively stable dollar. He had tax cuts. He had deregulation, spending restraint outside of the military. And that military spending won the Cold War. Yeah. So everything came into place. You're doing the exact opposite today. They want more regulations, more... Uh, taxes and the like, and the left is going absolutely berserk. Anything that makes life nice, they're against. Taking my, all my appliances away. I, did you have a, a good cold shower this morning? Because there's no water heaters left. Well, you can't, did, get, a, you, you can't get water through did, the shower heads anymore. Did, 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 you, put, did, you, put, uh, did you put your coffee? Uh, I mean, you, you can't get anything anymore. Did no, you have and, a uh, pizza last night? A nice wood-burning pizza? I'm getting all, and it shows, I'm eating all I can before they take it away from me. It's really, I don't mean to be snooty. Um, it is interesting, um, on a commodity basis, uh, first of all, commodity index is starting to rise again. We'll watch that. It's not conclusive. Gold, however, went from $1,600 an ounce last November to just short of 
uh, $2,000 an ounce. It fell a little bit today. But that is something to look at. All prices are also going up. Fellas, let me play you. Here's what the great Art Laffer said last night, talking about monetary policy in the classical model. You'll either agree with it or you won't. Uh, take a listen to what Arthur had to say, please. The Fed should follow interest rates, not lead interest rates, yeah. and they should do, just as you say, they should contract the monetary base or the balance sheet of the Fed mm -hmm. by selling bonds off during t periods of rising spot commodity prices and thereby taking money out of the system. We should have supply-side tax cuts on fiscal policy. The Fed should talk about that nonstop. Mm -hmm. So we have expansion in output and reduction in the quantity of money, which is the classic formula for bringing inflation back down under control and lowering inflationary expectations. You know, it's so amazing, Kevin. Arthur, you know, he'll just, like, launch into these impeccable sentences and paragraphs, like textbook-ready paragraphs touting the classical supply-side model. Um, what do you think about what he said? The Fed should follow rates, or keep an eye on commodity prices, contract the uh, balance sheet. What do you think of that? Yeah, contracting the balance sheet and supply-side policies, those are two big ones. And the other thing that you and Arthur have mentioned a lot that I think is really important and that I mentioned in my article at National Review today is that looking over the last four quarters where the economy is surprised a lot on the upside, uh, seven-tenths of a percent of that positive surprise is from increases in government spending. Yes. Uh, and if you think about it, you know, we're coming off of covid and, you know, they should have been cutting spending. Mm -hmm. And in fact, like, like, what have you seen, you know, at four quarters in a row where you're getting 0.7% as a contribution to growth out, out of government spending? And so I think that when the government spends like that, you know, this is something that, that Steve's been talking about since he ran for president, that, that devalues the dollar and, and weakens the currency and causes inflation. And so I think that we need to cut spending, have supply-side tax cuts, and then the Fed can do the stuff that Arthur's talking about, and then we have this under control. So don't think that it's under control. Like, that, that GDP deflator thing, it's a temporary phenomenon. Steve Forbes, last few moments here, I'll give you the last word. If you got a jump back of inflation, that'll sink the economy into a double-dip recession or not? Yes, because the Fed will say, oh, economy is causing inflation. We've got to depress the economy, put people out of work, make people poor. Mm -hmm. That'll improve the, our prospects. What no. happened to making the non-rich rich? They want to make the rich poor. I don't get it. No, and Lincoln said you don't make uh, poor people richer by making the rich poor. Ooh, that's it. That's the one I was looking for. All right. Steve Forbes, Kevin Hassett. Good scrambling, Kevin Hassett. Really quite awesome. The truck <laughs> broke and he still appears there in Washington, D.C. Folks, right here on the marvels of modern technology.